Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to a hopefully brief, famous last words, unboxing video of a watch from a brand that has not featured on the channel before. But I've had one eye on it for many, many years, that brand being Fairer. Now, Fairer are a British brand, but Swiss made watches, so Swiss made movements in all of them, and this one is no different. I suspect many of you will be similar to me, haven't encountered the brand in the flesh before, but at least know of them. I think they're kind of famous for a couple of different things. Very consistent look across their now vast model range. They've certainly added many, many more models over the last couple of years since they first came to my attention. Prominent Arabics on most of them, and really interesting use of a diverse range of colors, quite often all at the same time on pretty much all of their watches. Now, I didn't buy this one and it wasn't sent to me by the brand either. It was sent to me by my good friend Ashley over in Melbourne, who like me had one eye on them, admired their color schemes and decided to take the plunge on one of these flyback chronograph models a couple of weeks ago. Now, all of those colors, all of that design language looks fantastic on the website, looks great on paper, but what does it look like in reality? Let's flip the camera, peel off some stickers and find out. Okay then, so from Fera in the UK to Melbourne and then on to me in Sydney. Thank you again, Ashley. Much appreciated all the watches you've sent me over the last number of years. Now, a couple of firsts today. It's the first Fera that I've looked at, as I mentioned in the intro. It's also the first time I've reviewed a watch with this particular movement and it's a really interesting movement. I was sent a watch with this movement a couple of weeks ago, actually, and I was supposed to review it, but it was broken when it arrived. It was a prototype and the movement didn't function as it should. So this one is an ETA. It's an ETA 251294 power drive, pressy drive, high frequency quartz flyback chronograph. My goodness, this packaging is giving me grief. Surely in the 21st century, there's gotta be a better way. Oh my goodness, to open a cardboard box. It's a split second chrono with flyback function. Ah, Ashley, thank you for your order. Always nice when a brand does this. I mentioned it so many times. You don't get this from a big brand. You only get this from a micro. That's one of the reasons why you would choose to buy from a small company rather than a whopper. Okay, so inside that large piece of cardboard, there is a small piece of cardboard. Inside that small piece of cardboard, there is a fabric zip box here, all very nice indeed. As it should be, these are 535 quid, so 535 British pounds. That's what Ashley paid, I believe. I don't think they were on special when he ordered this one. And yeah, plenty of bits and pieces for your money. Anyway, polishing cloth here, watch care guide. We have a warranty and this watch, which is a Pendine 2. So 500 plus pounds for this one, not necessarily cheap, but five year warranty, a rare sight from a micro. Very much appreciated though. So as much an unbagging today as an unboxing, Pendine named after the Pendine Sands in Wales, which is a long stretch of coastline that was used in the early part of the 20th century for setting land speed records. Uh, Malcolm Campbell set one there in 1924 in his Bluebird which was an old Sunbeam X Grand Prix car. Now that is quite appropriate, that date 1924 chronograph, retro style chronograph. The first Rattrapon mechanical chronograph was released by Patek Philippe in 1922. So yeah, definite crossover here with the model name and also the technology, or at least the spirit of the technology that's in the back of this watch. We do get a few stickers to peel though, including one on the buckle and tang of the leather strap. There's a tag here once again emphasizing the British design but the Swiss manufacturer. Case back sticker. Always satisfying. And finally, one covering the dial as well. There we go. From initial impressions anyway, yeah, I think this one is as good looking in the flesh as it is on the photos. I really do like their use of color. It's quite subtle, you know, there's plenty going on here, but nothing seems too in your face. None of the colors really clash. Blue hands certainly identifiable against that cream. There's a bit of kind of pale mint here and plenty of red for those chronos. Now, because it's quartz, they put one of these movement stoppers in. Let's remove that, push in the crown, small second down there at six o'clock, and yes, this one, oddly enough, less chance of a dead on arrival with a quartz anyway than you get with an auto, and this one hopefully will fare better than the previous prototype, no pun intended. So 39 and a half millimeters in diameter, 
bang on 12 mil thick, nice crown there as well. 45 lug to lug, I'm really loving this set of dimensions. Very compact, 20 millimeter lug width, and on the supplied, I wouldn't necessarily call it a rally strap, but it's a kind of perforated and embossed kind of padded leather strap there, weighing in at a mere 63 grams. Now that is a boxed domed sapphire crystal, so box sapphire, push-pull crown and 50 meters of water resistance, which I think is reasonable, more than reasonable for this style of watch, the, the chrono. That's actually a really elegant side profile, isn't it? And I do like yet another little bit of color there on that kind of copper tone crown. Super smooth brushing on that mid case. And those chrono pushers are actually really quite discreet. Hang on a second. See how they compare to the chrono pushers on my Seagull 1963. I reckon they stick out about half as far, leading to a much more streamlined and sophisticated look overall from the fader, I must say. Very nice high polish screw on stainless steel case back and quick release spring bars in the leather strap. These case backs look great when you have that initial sticker peeling joy, but they scratch pretty much instantly. So do bear that in mind. I am gonna have to be extra careful to get this one back to Ashley in the condition in which it arrived. Okay, so what does this all singing, all dancing, at a power drive precision movement do then? Well, with five motors and 27 joules, it certainly does more than I was expecting. Plenty more than your average Seiko Mecha Quartz or cheap single tick Miota Quartz movement, for example. So so three sub dials, it's a 30 minute chrono timer. That's that one at the 10. This is down to the 10th of a second. It's a split second chrono. And that is a permanently ticking small second down there at the six. We have a date complication at the four o'clock with cream color match date wheel, which is nice to see. But you notice three chrono pushers. I will return to them in just a second. Plus I wasn't necessarily expecting this. If you pull the crown out to the first position, you see all of those chrono hands spinning. If the watch takes a whack, they can all be independent adjusted back to the vertical, back to their correct positions. That is standard, but the movement hasn't hacked. You notice the small second is still ticking down there. This is a traveler's watch as well. Look at that. You can adjust the hour without adjusting the minute or the second. If you pull this crown out to the second position, the movement will hack and you can adjust the hour and minute hand as you normally would. All right, what about the chrono then? Back in, ticking away, one push of the top pusher, the A pusher to start, one push of the A pusher to stop. What do we time? 4.7 seconds, one push of the B pusher to reset. So start, stop, down to the tenth of a second and reset. However, this is a flyback chronograph mechanism. So you don't even need to stop it. You press the B pusher at any point if you want to time something else, if you're timing a lap and you're moving on to the next lap and there we are, it starts again. Very nice indeed. Apparently that spins with 200 ticks per second. So super smooth, super fast chrono reset there. What about this third button then? Well, start, we're ticking away here. If I press this one, from beneath that red chrono hand emerges a blue chrono hand. So the red one has stopped at 7.8 seconds, according to those two sub registers. You can then carry on with the flyback here, or I can start Stop it again using this one. The blue hand keeps ticking. Press that again and it'll catch up with itself. I can stop it. I can reset it. Super, super versatile chronograph movement, this one, and a bit of a rarity, unless you're prepared to spend massive amounts of money on a Rattrapont automatic. I heard a rumor that this one was going out of production. They are available in this fairer, obviously. They're available in a number of Certina watches labeled as a pressy drive. Uh, the brand owner, it was an Alcadus watch that he was intending to put his this these movements in. A small run of them, he said he'd secured some of the last that were available from ETA. It would be a shame if this one was going out of production, because like I said, you don't see them all that often and it is a really interesting chronograph for not a whole lot of cash, to be honest. Looks great on wrist as well, I think. Obviously, this strap is box fresh and will need to be broken in. I will leave Ashley the pleasure of that. It's pretty soft and compliant, but yeah, it could do with a little bit of use, a little bit of wear in there. Great set of dimensions, kind of looks like a 40. It's quite a large chrono. Certainly, it isn't as crushed and cluttered as some of the other smaller chronos that I've looked at in the past. And those colors look really good on wrist, I think translates very well.
And I think they offer a fair degree of legibility to the blue against the cream and the red against the cream, all nice and easy to spot. Now Loom, I don't normally do a Loom video in an unboxing, but as this one is going back to Ashley and not hanging around for a full review with me, I thought I ought to. It's okay, you wouldn't necessarily expect outstanding Loom from this style of retro chrono, but for what it's worth, it's quite reasonable. The hands certainly last better than the indices, but it's certainly usable if not outstanding. And similarly, I wouldn't normally include a moans and niggles section in an unboxing, but I did spot a little speck of dust under the dial of this one next to that nine o'clock Arabic. I'll leave Ashley to take that one up with Fera if he wants to. And let's finish up this video today with a little bit of a macro montage as I sum up my thoughts on this, my first encounter with Fera. It is a handsome look and watch this one. Those syringe hands, I love the Arabics, just raised enough off the dial there, hence the loom. I also like the fact that they have branded this one quite discreetly. It manages to say Fera Universal, Kronogar Flyback and Swiss Made, so quite a bit of text on there, but it doesn't look crushed or cluttered, I don't think. And then of course there is the color. Very, very nice combination of colors. Not necessarily a color combination you would expect to work had someone just described it to you, but once you see it on the dial in those hands, it just all does come together rather nicely. Not cheap as discussed at over $500 for a quartz chrono on a leather strap, not a bracelet. And yeah, there is that speck of dust which really should have been identified long before this one was shipped to a customer. But that is a mighty pretty watch and I look forward to an opportunity to get some more Fairers on the channel in the future. So there you have it. First encounter with Fairer, but hopefully not my last. I really like that design language. I think it could have gone horribly wrong slapping all of those colors on the dial of this watch and a lot of their other watches, but it doesn't. They do it in a fashion that I think is spot on. If you like a colorful chronograph but don't quite have the budget for one of these, why not check out the very colorful Studio Underdogs or the old faithful Seagull 1963, which also combines a bunch of different colors and gets it right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.